So earlier on this year, I told you that I was going to start a container garden in this area here. And in today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the easy and cheap and free things that you can use for containers and how to fill them for dirt cheap. My budget for this container garden, I've set it for £20 and that's as maximum I'm going to go, including compost and seeds. So it's going to be pretty much an affordable garden for most people to be able to do. So let's get cracking and I'll show you the types of containers that I'm going to be using. So it might look like I'm surrounded by a bunch of mess, which I am, but I'm going to turn it into some real gold. I'm going to turn it into a garden that we can all be proud of. And I'm going to do it with all of these broken down things, things that people are throwing away, things that I've gathered around for free. So if you look at some of the containers that I'm going to be using, now these are really cheap grocery shop containers that people are throwing away absolutely dirt cheap same with these things if you go around sort of uh, butchers and meat shops you'll find these containers laid about people are throwing them away you can go and pick these up and they make great containers for for sh shallow rooted plants things i grow my lettuces and i grow my coriander and things like that and they're safe away from the birds away from the slugs because you can pick the perfect environment for them now these things i came across a bunch of these these are supermarket totes. Now, if these get a little bit of damage, the supermarkets throw them away and they end up going to landfill. We can get these back and we can turn them into really good planters. They're, they're nice and deep. They're more than, tw they're about 16 inches deep. They're about a foot and a half wide and, a, and about 16 inches that way at depth. So um, they're perfect. They're really good planters. I've got the old classic allotment raised bed behind me, uh, a bathtub. Now, this is the old bathtub from when we had our house done about 10 years ago this is one of my first raised beds and this is exactly how we used to grow in our old house i mean in our old house we had a, our garden was literally this patch of concrete and we had a bathtub and we had some of these containers and we had a couple of troughs that i'd made out of scrap bits of lumber and i'll show you one of those containers out of scrap bits of lumber so just back here I've got a bucket of mint and I keep mint in containers and at this time of year all of these dead strokes you can just come in break them back and that mint will just be ready to go there's a little bit of plastic blown in through the wind I'll pick that up and we'll bin that in a bit but that's not what I wanted to show you what I wanted to show you was this now this is a strawberry planter and what's interesting about this strawberry planter is I've got strawberries and tulips in here. So um, at this time of year, my tulips come up and I get some nice flowers. They die back and the strawberries take over and I get two harvests from one planter. It's just made out of scrap uh, two by fours. Perfect for a little backyard. You can make that for free with just a little bit of wood that you can find knocking about. I mean, that's exactly what we've done with that. So like that supermarket planter that I told you, the grocery tray, the, the grocery store tray, that's exactly what I've done. I've made it this little mock-up cold frame. It's just a literally a piece of plastic that was from a greenhouse that I had about 10, 15 years ago. And that would have ended up in a landfill, but I, I, I keep recycling this piece of green plastic for lots of different things. Now it's just a little temporary cold frame. If I lift this up, underneath here, I've got coriander growing. So uh, just outside, it's early March and I've got coriander growing outside. So this needs a bit of water, so let's give it a good, good old soak and then get these coriander plants going. Absolutely beautiful. So it's a nice contained little uh, cold frame that, with a little lid on top and you're growing in for free, absolutely for free. So it might look like I'm surrounded by a massive pile of mess, but this pile of mess is going to come in really handy for what we're going to be doing. So if I've got this big empty container like this, now this is probably about 40 litres. For me, it'd be an absolute complete waste of money if you were going to fill a container like this just full of compost or full of potting soil or full of container mix to grow plants in. That's something that I just never would do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how you can fill this container for absolutely next to nothing. So we've got a choice of materials that we can use when we want to line, you know, fill the bottom of the container. 
And the first thing that we've got is a load of shreddings or wood chips. Now these are just raspberry canes that are shredded up. These are old chili plants and old um, just prunings that I've got. Now a root system like this from a pot, that's going to hold on to a massive amount of water and it's going to be fantastic as a bottom layer in this to keep your container watered because that's, that's one of the problems that a lot of people have with containers is that they dry out. Once they dry out and they forget to water them, then the, the plants die. So this will come in really handy. And this is a lot of what, you know, one of the benefits of things like peat, because it's got, peat has got that natural organic matter from broken down roots and stuff. This is a, a, a really good substitute for that. So let's get filling this and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to fill it. So I'm just going to stick some of this, some of these prunings in at the bottom. And these things are going in as well. So the roots, got another chili plant, just snap that up. All of that is going straight into the bottom. So this container is one that I'm actually doing for a neighbor of mine. And for her, what we're going to do is we're going to just give her, um, but we're going to plant some strawberries up in it. So a bit of a marrow or skin of something, you know, uh, that's going in. Now here, this is just a container full of rubbish. So food waste. Now with food waste, I get asked quite a bit how to compost food waste, especially if you haven't got a compost bin. And if you're on a balcony or if you're on a, a small garden like this, then composting food waste is a problem that you're going to have. But wormeries are absolutely fantastic ways of doing it. But another way of doing it is in pot composting. So I'm just going to take all my food waste and I'm going to put a nice layer of that in here. See bits of bread, all sorts of things. All that food waste into there. Absolutely beautiful. There's even some bananas in here as well. So what I've been doing is, oh, from the neighbours, for a couple of the neighbours have been collecting their food waste, and that's what this is. So it's come from the neighbours, and it's going to go back to the neighbours, plotted up with some nice strawberries for them to grow for the next year or so. Get these bits of plastic out. Loads of things that will break down and provide really good food for the plants. So now we've got that in, we need to get some soily material in here. And again, that's just an old plant, so empty plant pots, they're going in. So you can see the root mass in there, plants that died. So this is the compost that was left over from the pot I had the chilies in. You know, the root plant that you saw me take out. And that's going in here now. And we've got ourselves what's looking like a really nice container for strawberries now. So far to fill this, it's cost me nothing. Absolutely nothing. When people see me fill containers like this full of fresh kitchen scraps, they think it's a little bit odd. But I've been doing this for a very long time with this method. And it's a way I've been saving on compost for a very long time. Now, I remember some of the old programs like Gardener's World back in the day, they used to actually suggest filling this pot with polystyrene and plastic bottles and stuff like that. One of the stupidest ideas that I can think of. So I've got all these strawberry plants that I've dug up from my own garden and they're all runners from my own, my own garden. And I'm gonna use these to uh, populate this, this pot. So, that can go in and I'm trying to get plants with a fair amount of soil around the base as well because that's one of the things that a lot of people forget when it comes to planters and containers is that plants actually need a lot of minerals from the soil so if you've got something like clay soil absolutely beautiful for adding mineral content to the you know for the for the plants to feed off it's very essential actually so I've got a really nice container full of strawberries now that can go for the next doors and the kids can enjoy that. Now I've got them in, I can see a few gaps that's popped up. So I'm just going to take some compost from another pot that has, you know, that's recycled from last year. And that's just going to go in and fill the gaps. 
Now, just to give this pot a little bit of boost, I'm just going to add a few chicken manure pellets to the top. Now, a lot of people will tell you to add those chicken manures. Some people might say mix the chicken manure into the potting mix as you're doing it, but I like to add it to the top because then when you water, all the nutrients get washed down rather than washed out because with this being a bit more of a contained system, you don't want to lose those nutrients as quickly. So I'm going to give it a good old water and that's going to be perfect to take round to my neighbour and the kids will really be able to enjoy that over there when summer comes and they'll be able to get lots of nice fruit from it. And I'm watering a lot more than you'd normally t water because I want the plants to settle in and I want to kick off that microbiological activity where the worm and the worms to come in and feast because I like that nice moist environment. With a container like this, it's absolutely chocker full of holes and that's going to be really bad at holding moisture. So what we want to do is we're going to turn that into something that can hold on to moisture as well as possible. Now, some people might suggest lining it with plastic, but the type of plastic that you'd be using to line it would be plastic bags and things like that. And they release a lot of microplastics into the soil and which, which will end up into your food. So I wouldn't recommend that. What I'd prefer to do is just line it with cardboard. And this is a great substitute if you haven't got wood chips. So I'm just gonna, I've got lots of little bits of cardboard that's absolutely useless for anything else. I'm just gonna line it completely with cardboard. Now, obviously, if you had a nice big sheet that you could drop in, that'd be ideal. But I've got all these little bits that are no good for anything else. And I use the big sheets for my packaging, for my pickles and stuff. So all those little bits are going in. All that's going in around the sides. And I'm just gonna try and block up as many holes as possible. Now, again with that, I've got some of my own kitchen scraps and these are going in. Basically you're composting in situ. All of this is going to break down into this pot and you're going to have a really nice, you're going to have an absolutely wonderful soil mix that you're making for free. I've just got another planter that I grew um, chilies in last year. And that's going in here really nice soil that's left over that we're just recycling everything that we're using is recycled material get them in we've got look friends these guys are going to turn all that material that we've dropped in here into beautiful food for these plants in no time at all okay so coriander is absolutely perfect for these little shallow trees um, lettuces really good for this as well so you can get these started in here really cheap really easily I'll give you an update over the season every month how I transform this area into somewhere that's really pleasant and somewhere really enjoyable to sit and you'll see how much food you can actually grow in an area that's probably about eight foot by about six foot it's not massive but we're gonna grow a lot of food here so thanks for watching don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and if you would like to support our channel we make videos on Patreon so there's a great way of supporting us there so I'll leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi